Alright, ready to actually start. Sorry about the long intro. Usually I don't do this with a battle. I don't know why this one particularly did it. Uh, but I've thrown some of the units into open order. Mainly the Spanish wing, which has to cross this terrible terrain. Also even a unit over here in the center with an intention of making it up two slopes. This guy doesn't make much difference to He's only got one slope to go at first. And, well... It really doesn't make a, a difference. It might be better to be in open order, but the problem is in open order, he's already essentially one formation hit down, right? It won't hurt him to make this cross, and then he can continue further if he pushes through that, but I think this is going to be too much trouble to get through easily. The one problem, uh, I also threw down the uh, starting uh, orders. All the Protestants are in receive charge, no biggie there. The Catholics are in make ready on the two flanks, and I kind of want this flank to charge, but historically it didn't do much. The center's in charge. The center is where I have my artillery. I kind of want to keep that open so that I can uh, uh, kind of... This guy better be right flank. Um, can kind of pound things for a while. But, you know, I don't think artillery alone is going to take a defensive position like that, from what I understand of this game system. So, yeah, I'll probably just leave him in charge, take one shot, and then uh, march forward and kind of interfere a little bit with my units. So the Catholic, uh, well, the Catholic center moved forward as little as they could, which is one hex each. Um, including these guys, just trying uh, to give the artillery another shot if I failed my momentum, which was not terribly likely or unlikely, but it ended up happening. So now I get another fire of those artillery in before I close. Um, and it also allows me to do advancing fire instead of just charging up into those muskets and, and hitting them. I'm not sure how much, help, how much uh, use that really is, because it was kind of cool that I had broken up the formation of these with a lucky artillery shot. I think this guy firing down the hex spine gets to choose which side it is. Well, this side I don't think he could hit, but this side, well... Uh, it's weird how you trace it. I don't think he could hit both of them, but he ended up doing so. I think the choice is either he couldn't hit uh, this unit if he went through this one, the line of sight rolls are kind of funky in this. Or, well, no matter what, he couldn't hit this, but he could have hit the big one. I, I, it's probably not going to make a difference, though, because the receive charge allows him to reform those units at no cost. The uh, Catholic left flank cav got a, into charge order and moved forward. You can see they smacked into some of the light infantry. Nice thing about light infantry, you can charge them and cut them apart without having to pursue. If you break them up, as was done with one, or knock the morale back, you don't lose your cav for it. So, light infantry is kind of a tasty little snack for them. And then the Spanish, I kept them in uh, make ready. I didn't try to change them and move up to the river line. Now, I've got all the Protestant units to go. There's not a lot I want to do here. I got to kind of think what I'm going to do with the cav, but for the most part, I want those Spaniards to hit this heavy infantry and take some, some damage from it. Line of sight here looks obstructed everywhere. Uh, actually, I think I can do line of sight through the light infantry. However, I would, I think, be firing grazing range artillery through it, which I don't want to do. So, right, one, two, three, four. Yeah, everything's too close to really fire without hurting my own units, if that's the case. Uh, so, real question then here, what do I do with this crap? It can't stand up against those cav if it's being charged. I've just seen that. However, I might be able to do some damage, and these guys aren't really worth anything. Well, the cav back here is. Uh, and then this big line of cav here, I don't know what to do with it. I'm going to keep it as a reserve to try to push uh, any kind of advance back, I guess. Yeah, after two turns, the Catholic left has really pushed those uh, skirmishers back. Still got the cav there, the leader Krapzow or whatever, Karpzow, is trying to uh, reform his units, slow things down. We see in the back, the cav has refused a flank in order to try to deal with that if it comes across, prepare itself um, for possible counter charges, etc., just to protect the uh, bridge. 
over here the Protestants are seeing the Spaniards coming across the stream. Now they pretty much even lights versus lights the Spaniards are able to just mop up those uh, light infantry screen that was in the swamp. Uh, you can see the losses here a lot. Over here they were all one strength units and even a two strength uh, skirmisher is able to automatically wipe that out. Did have one cav here unable to retreat because I think the rules changed there where cav uh, can no longer run away when they're charging, I'm not sure. But anyway, the Lowenstein unit moved up and opened fire on them and is just laying some fire down. Uh, in, in the center, the artillery didn't score any hits. This artillery did. It created a morale uh, formation hit on this unit. Uh, firing down the line there. That will slow down the Spanish advance a little bit. <clears throat> but uh, again, the lights were pretty much mopped up. But now we got this one big unit here that's got to be coped with. And, you know, it's really kind of a race, a race to the bridge. And there's the die roll situation. So you don't really know how long it's going to take. But if this uh, left flank cav can cut through, that might be able to get off off map and score some mondo points. Uh, of course, that might also change the balance of uh, combat ability on the field. Supposedly, the Catholics are a lot stronger. They certainly have higher quality units, but they don't have a lot of units. And if you look, the Spaniards, who are really facing the Protestants here, are not uh, the highest quality. So, I don't know what the... the the battle might take a different turn if the Catholics start ex exiting a lot of troops here where the Protestants kind of can hold on to these hexes and then uh, drive their own forces back to try to neutralize points or something, I guess. I don't know. All right, onward. One of the great things about this system is where, uh, you know, you're charging and you just can't halt the charge. That happened over here where the Cav kept moving forward. Uh, ended up hitting some units. Did good things, but then over here, all three heavies hit one at a time, and uh, there's just not a lot of room to hit with one then. And it wasn't necessarily the worst thing that could have happened, but it the die rolls came out very badly. One of the units was destroyed here. We'll get to this guy in a minute. And the other two were both repulsed. And now Ann Holt's command is pretty much, you know, needs to reform in order to make another assault. I've got some units out of command because they were charging down this way, chasing this guy. Uh, for the Spaniards, they made it across and did kind of neat. You got one unit here that charged in and, and broke that big unit. Uh, you also have fights uh, occurring across there. This didn't actually turn into a melee and I don't think this did either. Uh, no, you wouldn't. But he captured the guns there. And now, all that's left is the cav for the Protestants, which might be able to do something to drive some of those Spaniards back. Remember, we're playing for time here more than anything else. But we got two leaders in the uh, have to be dealt with, and there's only a 1 in 10 chance they just come back and we're okay. Well, as we enter turn 4, bad news for, uh, well, mixed news for the Protestants. They lost to Christian, who is worth 10 victory points. They get a better leader here in uh, Kniffossum, Kniffossum, uh, who knows. And uh, they also lost the other leader there who really doesn't matter too much. They get a colonel, same values. Trying to pull away there. They only got one strike in and they got repulsed in it. And I don't know. I don't know where we're, we're looking at here. You know, there's a lot of randomness because... Uh, as you're coming across, if you get a good hit, you can drive the Protestants back and, and maybe position yourself to be able to take advantage of them. But like we saw here, even when you've got wave after wave hitting, you might not dislodge them. This is a very powerful position, minus three on the terrain. This is the um, ruins and trench, minus three for fire, minus three for close combat going into that. Of course. The guys in here are defended by the trenches facing the wrong way. These aren't, you know, particularly uh, complex trenches, just ditches. So they provide a significant defense in either direction. And uh, that means just standing there firing, you may have the ability to take these guys down. I was trying to push quickly, though, by uh, assaulting it, and I paid the price. 
All right, I gotta do some cleanup. Uh, I routed the unit, but I gotta flip the leaders over and then start turn four. And here's starting turn three, or turn four. The bridge isn't up yet. Rare chance that that would happen to help save the Protestants here. Cordoba's Catholic wing, the Spaniards, uh, was unable to get out of charge. They didn't get a momentum either. So all these units, first of all, couldn't reform and had to move forward. Struck in here, got fired at without really good enough odds to melee. Now the infantry doesn't have the option to melee them because they're not uh, in the center hex location. They're going to have to rotate to actually hit that calf. The calf can't get away because it's charging. Um, fire here was not effective. This unit that was up here on the gun ran away from due to fire. It's now uh, below its casualty threshold. Elsewhere though, even though there's this time limit and, and desire for the Catholics to press on, they slip into rally up here, only being able to fire one gun down this line. I'm not even sure they can do this because they got this woods blocking them. This here, line of sight here, this is in kind of a depression. And it's in a blind zone behind this space. So there's no firing there. I can't really see anything. Ooh, I had this gun. One, two, three, four. That gun I can fire. I didn't take care of that one. Um, I'll do that, but it's not going to do much. And then over here into receive charge, again, to try to, you know, form the lines up and prepare for another attack. The problem is, of course, these guys get to form up too. And some of this could have continued pressing against the weakened enemy. I'm always, uh, you know, too cautious. <laughs> um, I don't want to press on with damaged units. But a lot of this was morale shaken as well as formation shaken. Some of it was formation broken. It just felt like I was going to lose the cohesion of my unit if I went through that. And I'm going to have to form up into open order here, so maybe they'll withdraw. That would be kind of cool, because then I can move forward, but I, I doubt they're going to make that mistake. And the turn boils down to being finished up uh, in a fairly mellow fashion. We've got uh, the big infantry, the Protestant infantry, just fired some shots into there, held its position for the most part. The Cav did its job to try to drive... Uh, the Spaniards back. And then over here, well, the colonel went about rallying units and uh, there was a charge which destroyed one of the Catholic cav and yeah, the light's terrible. It should be in the way, but then it's really dark. Uh, anyway, I'll load this one up. Yeah, right now rebooting my work machine. So I had some problems but it gave me a chance to finish up the turn. All right, up it goes.